this interview with SBF and Giselle Bündchen on stage. I don't know how I've missed it because it was from May 2022, but I just found it by coincidence when I was researching some other stuff and I thought I wouldn't do any more SBF interviews. But when I looked up what they were talking about and when I saw okay, SBF on stage with a former model, the whole picture already looks like it doesn't make any sense at all. These people shouldn't be on stage together. And then I listened to it for like a few minutes and I had to do a video about it. So this is going to be from May 2022. SBF Giselle Bündchen talk about the benefit of cryptocurrency, sustainability, how entrepreneurs with passion can change the world. And honestly, I don't even know what this whole thing is about. I have no idea what even the purpose of this thing was. But for our amusement, I selected a few clips. So let's go and watch the interview. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Lauren Remington Platt, and I'm the head of Global Luxury Partnerships at FTX. And thank you all for joining us. Um, today, we're going to be discussing Giselle and Sam's shared mission of philanthropy, which is the theme of our spring summer 2022 luxury campaign, which is the first of its kind for FTX. As soon as a company gives out these bullshit titles, head of luxury partnerships, it seems already that she barely knows how to pronounce her own title. The head of global luxury partnerships. This is obviously the peak exuberance. And the funny thing is this whole thing is SBF looks like he's getting away with murder. If you just look at the way he looks, he's like checking the doors if the police is storming in. It really looks like he's getting away with something. He has like this super mischievous face. Like the little boy who replaced the sugar with salt. No one has noticed yet, but he knows that any second someone is going to figure it out. But if you just look at that picture, right? You have the global whatever head of luxury partnerships. And then you have this model. I mean, ex model, obviously she's retired, but you have the model, you have the head of luxury partnerships. And then you're in the middle, you have the genius CEO. The genius CEO looks more like a homeless person. Obviously you never know how a genius looks like because it's a point of a genius. It's something eccentric, something very uncommon. But so if you just look at that, this looks like a scam. What has become obvious to me since joining FTX is that we are more than just the fastest growing crypto company globally. We are a company whose core belief is that people with passion can change the world. The world is changing and not just because of crypto adoption. As a society, we're becoming more conscious of our impact on the environment and how kindness is more important than ever before. Giselle and Sam have always been ahead of the curve, and they've been spearheading these global shifts for years that are only now becoming mainstream. This is so funny. So obviously SBF bought the whole thing, right? SBF put out so much of the user money he just spent and spent and spent. He gave her a bullshit job. This literally is a bullshit job. Head of, what does that even mean? Why luxury partnerships? What are they doing? This sounds like handing out more money. Head of luxury partnerships for a cryptocurrency exchange. Imagine you go to a bank and okay, this is my bank and I want to deposit some money, my mortgage. Maybe I want to take a loan. And then you see like a guy with like a big code and gold chain he's the head of luxury partnerships you would probably wonder maybe i should change the bank because they seem to be throwing money around but everything she is saying is exactly what sbf said is this bullshit persona that he developed in this dm that he had with i guess an acquaintance of his who was a reporter who put everything out he said that this is all bullshit this is this woke stuff that i think what is it americans or just western people in general like this political correctness that he used to get a good image this is it this is the whole thing he hired someone she looks and speaks the part she doesn't seem too comfortable on stage she seems a little bit nervous you can see it in her eye she's like very quick she definitely seems nervous it seems like she was placed there to talk the bs that sbf knew he had to say in order to get public recognition and it worked it worked well what he did there before the bankruptcy was great he was the guy he was doing it right like everybody was happy but it's so funny that he 
he sits there and he literally looks like he's getting away with murder. He's like, I can't believe this works. I can't believe that I just give her a script and she's literally reading a script. She's not making this up. She's reading the script. And guess who wrote this? If I had to guess, someone related to SPF probably wrote the script. This wasn't her. She probably didn't write the script. Passion, sustainability, changing the world. This is hard marketing copy. And he sits there and he's thinking, I can't believe people actually buy this stuff. I, I think, you know, the, the fact is that you can impact way more people um, through, through, you know, your philanthropy, through... Um, how you give back than, you know, you do in your everyday life. And, you know, that, that's, I think, what, what really sets it, sets it a, a apart. Um, uh, and, you know, you can think about the thousands of people uh, who you can help who are dying of diseases that no one should be dying of um, today. And, and, I mean, there are millions of them, but, but a single person can potentially save thousands of their lives over the course of your career. And, that, that's a lot of, uh, of lives to save. I don't even know what he's saying. Uh, millions of people that are dying of disease that no one should be dying of. Uh, and, and it would be good to save thousands of people. I mean, even saving one life would be good. What is he saying? He has mastered the art of humming the music without actually knowing the lyrics. This whole thing, everybody who listens to that, who already has like a warm heart and thinks about, yeah, we should do good for people. We should make sure that everybody feels good. Everybody who already thinks like that and thinks, you know what, we should indiscriminately try to help everybody. And if we do that, then the world is going to be a better place, which obviously it's not that easy. But everybody who already thinks like that and hears SPF spew this, it's just going to turn off their head and think, you know what, he's right. Even though what he's saying doesn't really make sense. What he's saying is not a plan. What he's saying is extremely vague. I don't even understand what diseases he's talking about or what exactly the mechanism of helping would be. But he knows how to hum the music without actually saying the lyrics and people soak it up. It's so hilarious. And as he starts talking, Giselle Bündchen starts scratching her head because that's what happened. You turn off your head. You're like, oh, okay, he doesn't say anything. And you just wait until He's done. And it's funny how it's so often the incompetent people who want to do good for the world, and it is the competent people who just want to do good for themselves. This is the scenario we always find ourselves in. The people who are actually capable, they just care about enriching themselves. And the people who actually want to help others, they're usually the incompetent ones that are never going to succeed. It's funny how the world is set up. Well, I, I think what you said is like, you know, um, in the end of the day, uh, the earth doesn't belong to us, right? We are just uh, in here in passage. And I think it's really important to think about um, what are we leaving behind? Because either we're gonna be part of the solution or we're gonna be part of the problem. The fact is, we're all gonna have an impact in this world. We just need to decide what kind of impact we're gonna have and we wanna have. And I think it's all about intention. You know, where we are putting, where our energy goes is what grows. So if we choose to focus in being part of the solution, and, and really like make our life count, right? Because I think, what's the point of being here otherwise, right? I mean, I definitely want to be part of the solution and not part of the problem because when I leave this world and my kids are going to, you know, be here, my grandchildren, you know, I want them to look back and say, you know, that, hey, we did all we could to create, to be, you know, part of the solution and not part of the problem. It sounds like she made it up. I hope she made it up. I hope she didn't sit at home and, and had like this speech written out that says part of the solution or part of the problem. And she was like rehearsing in front of the mirror. I was like, okay. I really want to be part of the solution and part of the problem. I really hope she didn't do that. I really hope this wasn't planned because it sounds like she made it up and she sounds like she was stumbling across a word. It sounds like she was just speaking and like freestyling, repeating the same stuff again. But I have to say, because I don't want to always say negative things if there are positive ones, I watched the whole thing and there were actually some parts where I thought, you know what, she's a good speaker. Not, not here. Like this isn't eloquent. This isn't something great. I mean, the way she's presenting, she's like looking across the room. She seems very confident the words she's saying that's not good this is not very insightful this is not very smart but the way she was presenting it was very good very confident so i give her that so there's not a complete dig on her but what she just said is just and it's actually a really great example of the incompetent always trying to do good because clearly if you want to do good for the world you should make sure that the thing you're writing on is actually robust right is this a good company is this a company i want to associate myself with is this my legacy which she didn't do she just jumped on it and tried 
try to speak a message. So clearly an example of the road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? Yeah. So, you know, when thinking about the scale of it, you know, there's sort of two sides. One is like, what scale can we give? Another scale is what side, what, what scale like could be given effectively. And maybe just starting with the second one, because I think it's maybe one of the more um, Im important things to think about is like, you know, how much can you scale up impact? And, and I think the answer is enormously. Um, you know, you can look at something like a billion dollars a year that can be spent fighting one disease um, by the world. Um, and, you know, the billions that can be spent on developing world health. And that's just one sector to look at. You can think of the, you know, tens to hundreds of billions, um, you know, that could be used to help, you know, on sustainability. You can think of the, um, you know, I mean, what was the impact of just dealing with the fallout from COVID-19? For the world, I think we're talking probably north of $10 trillion. This was the one thing where even I was surprised because I was sitting on this nine-hour flight and like a maniac, I was watching an interview with SBF and deposition tapes with Elizabeth Holmes. I was probably the only person ever who watched deposition tapes of Elizabeth Holmes on a flight. But when he said that you can scale impact, I thought for sure he said that, okay, this is tricky. You can't scale donations like that. So when he said that, oh, yeah, actually, donations can be scaled enormously. I was like, are you serious? This is completely ridiculous. This is the gambling guy. Obviously, he would say that. I don't know why I didn't expect that. But obviously, he would say that because it's all about wasting money. Oh, you'd be surprised. Wasting money is very scalable. I can waste 1 million. I can waste 10 million. I can waste 100 million. I can waste 10 billion. So this is his approach. And by the way, it's very obvious. Let's say you want to give 5 million to certain cancer studies. But let's say you give 10 million to 20 million, 30 million, how is the efficiency of the research going to change? Because now the laboratories and the scientists know, you know what, money is a little more available, maybe they spend a little more, maybe they hire a little more than they would need. Everyone who has worked in a research lab knows that as soon as money comes in or big grant comes in or big financing comes in, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to be bought that hasn't been bought for a long time because people have just been waiting to get more money and these things might not be a sense. So donations and just giving money or throwing money at stuff is not scary. You have to be careful, careful of the efficiency and what you give the money to. Obviously, we're talking about SPF, so he was neither of those. We're going to be giving to a number of different things. I think probably the single biggest thing this year is going to be uh, pandemic prevention. Um, basically, you know, we clearly were not prepared for COVID uh, as a world. Uh, we are still not prepared for it. If there's another third pandemic today, there would be another shit show. Um, you know, we haven't really learned our lesson. Um, and COVID was not as bad as it could have been, right? Like, you could imagine a much scarier pandemic arising. And I still don't think we would know how to respond as a world. And that could be destabilizing. That could be something that, you know, our ancestors would look back on as a you know, permanently destabilizing moment for the world if we're not careful. Oof, yeah, the pandemic was weird. I think even the WHO has now said, people, it's over, like now it's gone. Whatever, probably not in every part of the world, but in most parts, especially in Europe and even South America, a lot of parts, it's not just over. But I think it's a good example of wasting money because a lot of money was spent on a lot of different things that probably weren't the best ROI, that weren't the best return on investment. I think a lot of that was caused just by politicians trying to look good trying to make sure that they're re-electable, trying to make sure that if something goes wrong, it's not their fault. But I don't think that any funding can help that. So this sounds completely delusional to me because this is the one thing that we can't influence. This is the one thing that we have to trust a government to do right. But pandemic prevention was the sexy thing. This is exactly what you would say in 2022 because he always tried to ride the wave. If you want to pull out your phone and buy a share of Apple, you're probably going through 10 different companies from start to finish. Each one of those is going to be reducing transparency and increasing fees on it. And, you know, to the point where you're literally not allowed to see the order book that you're trying. You're not allowed to see what is the price of Apple right now when you buy it, unless you want to pay millions of dollars, in which case, sure, you can see what, what it's trading at right now. Um, and, you know, that's for people who have real financial access, right? That, that's the good case for individuals. The bad case is a lot of people who are basically disenfranchised for whom, you know, I mean, overdraft fees are impossible to deal with if your bank account is ever running empty because 
it's non-deterministic how long it takes payments to go in and out. So you never know exactly whether you're, there's going to be a mismatch in days. Ignore all the content he just said. Everything he just said about the payments and making sure that things are fair and transparent and how people are treated unfairly, all irrelevant. But I left this clip in because this is his approach to building trust. If you've ever wondered why people find SBF trustworthy or why they thought, you know what, he knows what he's talking about is because he brought others down to make himself look good. If you're the guy who always points out how things are unfair, how things are actually done poorly in other ways, or let's say exchanges today, they're really bad. They're always mistreating their customers. They're stealing their money. The customer doesn't know what to do. Maybe they're overcharging them. Maybe they're locking their accounts and they can't get their money out and people are panicking. This is all stuff that he has said. The more he points out the flaws of other other platforms and other things and the more passionate he seems about it the more people think you know what he's right and I bet anything that he will do will be better by always pointing out the bad stuff of other things he builds trust and I've seen that in multiple interviews this is his approach and you see how he licks his lips because he knows that's what he's doing he knows he has the audience in his hand as soon as he brings down all these other things he knows they come to him Maybe this is the last interview of SPF that I'm going to comment on, but maybe there's going to be more. Thanks for watching.